Volatile Upgrade! Hey guys, welcome to Volatile Upgrade! I'm Jeff, and I'm gonna be playing Kamiko for the Switch. Uh, this is a fun little, uh, indie game that came out relatively recently. Um... Uh, yeah. Not too much to say about it at the title screen. It looks really pretty. I really do like it. Uh, so, in this game you have your choice of one of three, uh, shrine maids. Or whatever they're called. Uh, basically just characters. Uh, Yamato, Uzume, and Hinome. Uh, and I'm gonna go with Hinome. Because, you know, most people who have played this game and done playthroughs of it usually go with the sword wielder. Uh, okay. So, O oh child of the transient world, abrupt though it may be, thou art summoned now to the realm of the dead. <laughs> I love the old English. It's great. Thou should know that the gates connecting thine transient world and our realm of the dead have been sealed by demons. If this goes on, thine transient world will become ruled by said demons, and humans will be led down the path to destruction. Before you is the Imperial Regalia, the Mirror of Yata. This weapon has been granted to thou because amongst the Shrine Maidens, you hold the special power. Woo! Hear my words, O child of the transient realm. Become the Kamiko who will vanquish the demons and release the seal on the gate between worlds. And just like that, we're in the game. Alright, so the gameplay for this is, in my opinion, a lot of fun. Uh, it's a small action puzzle game. Uh, and when I say small, I do mean small. You can beat this game in less than an hour if if you even have a slight idea as to what you're doing. My first playthrough of this game was like 50 minutes. So... And I, I also did another playthrough today that took 30 minutes. So... It's short, but it's sweet. I love this game. Um... So the character that I decided to go with is, um... She has as her weapon a mirror shield of sorts that acts more like a boomerang than anything. You can see that little circle that I'm throwing out. Um, it goes out, does a pretty significantly powerful attack, and, uh, and uh, it just comes right back to me. And I can also direct it by just, you know, pushing the analog stick a certain way. So, uh, yeah. And of course, it always comes back to the location that I'm currently in, rather than, like, just going back to where I threw it from. Which is handy, because, like, I can just direct it through a line of enemies just like that. Uh, if I was good, I probably would have gotten those ones. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to take this key to its locked door yet. Um, another interesting thing about her is that when her shield or her mirror or boomerang or whatever is out in an attack uh, and you hit the but the attack button again it uh, lets you use a dagger attack which is great for like close range so whereas the other two characters in this game are exclusively long range or short range depending on which one you pick of course uh, this one actually has an interesting mix of gameplay and I really like that Um, so, you may have noticed that I've been attacking a bunch of enemies and these little blue orbs are coming out. I'm gonna go ahead and call these my SP, my special points. Uh, and I need them. They're like, they're kind of like a currency or an ability to open up chests and doors and such. And, uh, you need them to progress through the levels, and to unlock the shrines, open these chests, which sometimes have upgrades, depending on the chests and the location of them. Uh, and you get this by destroying enemies. Uh, but what's really interesting is, you know, it actually employs a combo system, where, uh, getting a... Uh, getting a combo effectively acts as a multiplier to how much SP you get. So, the longer you can keep a combo going, the more SP you'll be able to get, and you'll just be 
like unlocking all the chests and everything with no problem. And it also acts as a meter to uh, to use your special attack. And it's different depending on the Shrine Maiden. Uh, for this one, it basically just throws the um, it basically just throws the uh, giant version of this boomerang thing that goes out in a circle and just destroys basically everything on the screen. That's great. Oh, you I may have also noticed that I've been carrying around these items to various parts of the uh, of the stage. Um, an interesting little uh, tidbit that they added into this game is respawning enemies. Like enemies constantly respawn, which from a certain perspective can be annoying, as you'll see in one of the later levels where it absolutely is the worst. But uh. It's also interesting, because if you leave just one enemy, the rest of that group that spawns in with him won't come back until you kill that one. Uh, and that's interesting, because there are these sections, like I was stating, uh, where you have to uh, carry these items around to different locations on the map. And uh, if an enemy hits you, you'll drop that item. So, okay, I'll explain that in a minute. Um, so what's interesting is you sometimes, you can brute force it and try to like make your way through without getting hit, but it's much easier if you just leave one of the enemies like that, and you'll be able to much more easily get around them and unlock the shrines or whatever it is that you need to do. Hiya! Alright, so the goal of these stages is to, uh, is to purify or cleanse the, uh, these shrines, and there's four of them in every level. Uh, part of the puzzle is figuring out where they are and how to get to them. And, uh, that's basically it. You just get to the end of the stage and fight a boss, and that's it. First stage. Uh, alright, so... For this run of the game, I will be attempting to get all the secrets, uh, all of the power-ups, which include these red rhombus-looking things that act as your health, and these blue cubes that act as uh, your SP meter expansions. Alright, here's the boss. Bring it, dude! Oh. Alright. So, this game now holds no secrets for me. I have played through it four times. I know exactly where everything is, and exactly what each of the bosses does. So, I'm probably gonna make these bosses look a lot easier than they actually are. Just saying. But they're not that hard. They are interesting, though. I will say that. Like, each one of them has different ways of making them vulnerable. For this one, you just have to activate these switches by getting the boss to jump on them. And then he shoots out a couple projectiles, one of which is his vulnerable spot. Bet you couldn't guess which one that is. It's probably the giant red glowing one. And his, uh... His attacks vary a little bit depending on the point in the fight you're at. You'll notice that he gets faster and faster, shoots out more of those fireball things, and also shoots out more of these projectiles. But, you just gotta hit him three times and that's it. Oh, he's all the way over there. Quick, get him! Yeah! And that was the first stage. Pretty, uh... Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but a heck of a lot of fun. Alright, sweet. Well, that's all the time I have for this episode, guys. Uh, I'm just going to be doing one stage per episode. So, uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and come back for the next episode where I tackle stage two. Uh, what was it again? I forget what the level's called. But we'll find that out next time on Volatile Upgrade. See ya!